Good morning. Welcome home to Trinity, a place of sharing the gospel and growing God's family. Uh, Today we are continuing our sermon series entitled Lured, looking at those lures, those temptations that the devil dangles right in front of us. Today we look at the lure of self-reliance. Today's also one of those days where at the end of the service we're going to have a Q&A session, question and answer session. So if during the sermon you have any questions that pop in your head, there are these blue uh, slips of paper here. You can uh, write down a question, um, then we'll collect them and uh, we'll answer as many of them as, as time allows at the end of the service. So if something, uh, you have a question about something, be sure to, to write it down. Our opening hymn for today is hymn 103, Glory Be to Jesus. This morning we follow the order of worship, which is in the service folder, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O God. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. 
I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Let us worship Him. With today's theme of the lure of self-reliance, our first scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 4. This is uh, Cain killing his brother Abel, and Cain certainly is an example of self-reliance as opposed to relying on God. This will also be the sermon text for today. Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother, Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the, first, the, the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. This is the word of our Lord. Let's join in singing Psalm 62. Psalm 62 is on page 88 in the very front part of the hymnal.
please stand for the reading of the gospel. Today's gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 22, verses 47 through 51. And here we see the example of one of Jesus' disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane relying on himself to defend Jesus. And of course, this um, individual who cut with the sword is Peter. While he, Jesus was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Look, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. This is the word of our Lord. Let's join in singing, Go to Dark Gethsemane, verses 1 through 3. Please be seated. Don't forget, if you have any questions today, to write them down on, the, on those blue sheets. So my brothers and sisters, um, there's someone in your family that really loves fishing. Have they ever told you some fishing stories? And do you believe them when they tell you those stories? Last week when we began the sermon series entitled Lord, we, we look at the devil going fishing with that lure, that temptation of, of wanting more. And, and actually, I don't think you can exaggerate the impact or the importance of that fishing story. He got two big ones, Adam and Eve. And today we're, we're looking at, at another lure that the devil tempts us with and and really today we're looking at Satan going after the next generation, Adam and Eve's children. And just like with last week, today's lure 
is one that is, it just didn't work back then. It works on us today too. Today we're looking at that lure of self-reliance. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 4, the fourth chapter in the Bible. And today we see the, the first birth of a human being. And when we see that first birth, we see that it brought joy and hope. And if you're a fill-in-the-blank kind of person, that's the first fill-in-the-blank in your worship folder. That first birth brought joy and hope. Let's take a look at what Genesis chapter 4 says. It says, Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. So here is the first birth. And of course, like with any birth, there's, there's joy here. But do you remember what God had said? What, what he said would happen through Eve? One of her children, one of her descendants, would be that Savior who would crush Satan's head. And here, with the help of the Lord, she, she gave birth to a child. See, what, what God had said just wasn't words. Here, it wasn't just joy in her hands. There's hope. Hope that, that one future child like this would be that Savior, not just for her and Adam, but, but for all descendants. Well, of course, these children grew up. Cain and Abel and all the other children grew up. They, they had families of their own and, and, and people worshipped God, bringing their sacrifices. And that first recorded sacrifice, unfortunately, brought anger. And that's the next fill in the blank. The first recorded sacrifice brought anger. Look at what Genesis chapter 4 says. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Now this is the first record of a sacrifice being brought to God, but probably wasn't the actual first one. This has probably been going on for a while. Cain was one that uh, was a farmer. Abel... Um, was a rancher. And they bro both brought an offering to God from what they had. But that difference, what they brought, wasn't really the issue. God looked with favor on Abel and his offering and not on Cain and his offering. Now how exactly God showed that, it doesn't say. They just knew God looked with favor on Abel, his offering, and not on Cain's. Why, though? Later in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, it gives us a clue. In Hebrews it says, By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. And then just two verses after this, it says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why did God look with favor on Abel and his offering? It's because Abel gave that offering out of love, out of an expression of his faith. It's because of what was here in his heart. And for Cain, it was given out of obligation and not faith. 
One of the very last books of the Bible says this, 1 John. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. See, here's the thing. God cares about us. What's here in our heart. He looks way past the outside. He looks right here. And Cain, when he saw this, that God looked with favor on Abel's offering, not his, this, this got Cain angry. Because God revealed what was here in his heart. Cain didn't like that. And so God said, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. See, God, God gives this warning. Things, things are not good for Cain. God said sin is, is crouching right there at the door. And if any of you have cats, don't think of cats. You, you, you know how cats, when they're in, the, in a playful mood, they, 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 they might be hiding around a corner? Or, or under a chair or something, when you walk by, they swipe at you. They're just in a playful mood. Don't think that. Think something much bigger. Think um, a lion waiting, wanting. God reaches out to Cain and tells him sin is. Sin is crouching at your door. This, this is not good. It, well, for Cain, that anger, it, it came out. And you have the first murder in the history of the world. And that murder brought pain. That's the next point. And some of us know what kind of pain that is like when someone you know, someone you care about has been murdered. That is a pain that lasts. Genesis chapter 4 says, Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Okay, this was no accident. This was thought out, premeditated. Cain killed his brother. Now, one of the things that this account from Genesis 4 tells us, one of the things that it teaches us is this. Little choices can have big results. And you know, that, that, that's true in a lot of things. It can be true in good ways, right? Little choices can have big results if you're talking about dieting or, or exercise, right? Little choices... Give enough time, uh, whether you're talking about diet or, or exercise, you can have some pretty amazing results after a while. That's true. But it can also be true in a bad way. Little choices can have big results. Uh, anyone who ever plays Candy Crush knows exactly what I mean. <laughs> a, a little choice to, to play a game yeah, for 10 minutes. And then... I'll do another level. 
and, and another. And, and eventually, you look up and it, it's been over an hour, maybe even hours. It, something you never intended at the beginning, but, but little choice after little choice can add up to big results. A, a, a senior in high school can decide that they want to go to college and they want to major in this. But not every college has offers that major, so you have to pick which college. And after you pick, you go and you form some, some lifelong friends and you go through classes and you get your degree and you, you go looking for a job and you get hired for a job and you move there. And If God was never part of each of those little choices... If you've never looked for a college where there's a church nearby or you never go to church, a person can end up in their career, establishing their career in a new job, and they haven't been part of a church or gone to church for almost 10 years. And little choice after little choice can, can ultimately end up to, to some big results. You see that here with Cain, don't you? Okay, so, so, so Cain's a farmer. He, he plants. He harvests. He, he brings an offering to God. He gets angry. He looks down. God talks to him, but he doesn't listen. He, he sulks. He talks to his brother. Hey, hey, let's talk. And he kills his brother. One choice after another leads to something pretty big. Little choices can have big results. So, what sin is crouching at your door? What, what are those little choices that you've made in your life that have led you to a point where you're right at that edge of some pretty big results? Has it, um, maybe, maybe dating someone more, more out of convenience. But th then it's gotten serious and th they really aren't someone that, that encourages you in your faith. Maybe even discourages you. Or, or maybe it's, it's um, you, you've made little choices throughout the, the quarter at school and, and you haven't been doing your work like you should and, and now you're, you're almost at the end of the quarter and uh, you're facing some pretty big results because of it. Have you made choices every day to, um, to have a drink or two? To, to the point where today you... You can't go on without a drink every day. When you get together with friends, have you made little choices where you keep talking about some other people and, and now that's all you do? And maybe at school you, you, you laughed at someone when they did something kind of silly, but now, but now you, you laugh at them even when they don't do something that makes everyone else laugh. And, and then you start texting them to make fun of them, and, and you're what's called a bully. What are the choices, little one after little one, that you've made in your life that means sin is crouching at your door? Because little choices can lead to some big results. Here's the thing, though. Little choices can lead to big results. That is also true of God. Back 
In the Garden of Eden, God made a choice. He first promised that a descendant of Eve would be the, the, the Savior of the world. And little choice after little choice, God repeated that promise. God, God showed His love to His people. Choice after choice after choice end up leading to some pretty big results. Because that Savior was born. And Jesus, that Savior, His little choices also led to some pretty big results. Day after day, He showed His love to, to those who were considered loveless, unlovable. And day after day, those choices ultimately led Him to that cross. Where on the cross, He laid down His life to pay for all our little choices and all the big results in our lives. And all those little things then lead up to something big for us. Forgiveness. And an amazing life waiting for us in heaven. And every day God is saying, I am with you always. So, What's this mean then? Today's theme is the lure of self-reliance. Self-reliance really involves two things. It, 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 it involves an overestimation of self and an underestimation of sin. Think of Cain, right? an overestimation of self. We can easily fall into that. Thinking we're more important than God's will. But here's the thing. God was not made for us. We were made for Him. Anything that makes God less means we're making ourselves, not God, more. And the other part of this is underestimation of sin. And it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal if we have sex before we're married. It's not that big of a thing if, you know, we skip church for a while. It's not that important if, if kids learn more about, I don't know, Fortnite than, than Jesus. It's not that big of a deal if we spend hours scrolling. I mean, it's okay if we spend more money on vacation than we do in, in giving to God that year. My friends, sin is, is crouching at our doors. And the moment we underestimate sin is when it will pounce. I, um, I read a book this week. And there's an interesting line in that book. It said this, The gospel makes me disappear. Gospel means good news. It's what Jesus did. The gospel makes me disappear. It makes my sin disappear, right? Jesus paid for our sins. But it also then speaks to my importance. When I disappear, he becomes more important. When our self-reliance goes away, our reliance on Jesus increases. Don't make life all about you. It isn't. It's all about Him. So, when trouble's come in your marriage, don't go to God for help as the last ditch effort. I, um, don't, don't try to do it yourself because odds are you're probably the reason you got into the trouble. So go to God. If you, um, you don't like cleaning and that is a struggle for you, take it to the Lord in prayer. 
in daily choices, the little choices that we have, include Jesus in all of them. Because little things can end up with big results in a good way too. Rely on Him. Him who, who created you. Him who, who redeemed you. Him who, who has an amazing life waiting for you. And show that in everyday decisions. Everyone who, who goes fishing knows you're not going to catch every fish in the water. There are going to be fish that get away. So when the devil drops his lure of self-reliance or any other temptation, be the one that got away. And how you do that is not to look here, but every day to look to Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, when Satan brings that temptation, that lure in front of us to, to rely on ourselves, to, to do things by ourselves, to focus so much on us, Lord, when sin is crouching at our door, help us to see you, your love, what your choices lead to, and what your choices mean for us place at your side in heaven. Lord, remind us of that every time we give in and every time that temptation is right there in front of us. When we are Lord, Lord, may we see you. In your name we pray. Amen. Please stand. Let's join together in confessing our faith. We use the Apostles' Creed. It's on page 6 of the worship folder. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's join in singing hymn 480. Please be seated.
And this time we're going to do three things. We're going to bring our offerings like Abel did to God. Um, also, please fill out one of those cards, the registration cards, um, and hand those toward the center aisle. And then any of those blue cards. If you had any questions, um, be sure to write them down and hand them also. The ushers will gather those cards when they uh, gather the, the registration cards. This morning in our prayers, we include three special prayers. We uh, a prayer of, of thanks as uh, Pastor Cook and his wife Laura had a baby boy on Friday. Sawyer Ryan Cook was born. 10 pounds, 12 ounces. Um, also prayer um, for the Board of Family and its ministries. And then also prayer um, for Sandy Knobloch and her family. Uh, Sandy's sister Joyce Shepherd uh, suddenly went home to heaven um, this weekend. We join in the response of prayers on page 7. Please stand. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God Almighty, Lord of life, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord, we, we join Pastor Cook and Laura in, in thanking you for the birth of their healthy baby boy, Sawyer Ryan Cook. Lord, keep him in, in good health, bring him into your kingdom through holy baptism, and Lord, grow his faith every day of his life. And also, Lord of life, we ask you to be with the family of Sandy Knobloch, as they mourn the loss of her sister Joyce, Shepherd. In this sudden death, Lord, comfort them with assurance that all the little choices you have made has resulted in something big, something eternal for Joyce. And also, Lord, we ask for your blessings on our board of family ministries. Bless this board as, as they seek to, to strengthen our families and reach our youth with you and your love and your word. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. 
and in all we do. Direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated. At this time, we'll watch this month's Wells Connection video. Hello, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. What's the first step in starting a home mission? There's actually no single answer because every situation is different. We want to tailor the approach to meet the needs of the community. And no congregation illustrates that better than the new home mission in Richland Center, Wisconsin. It's a special day in the city of Richland Center. People are assembling for the very first worship service ever at Bethlehem Lutheran Church, our Wells Mission congregation here. You could just see the, uh, the smiles on everyone's faces that this is no longer in the distance, but it's here. Getting to this point has been the result of the Lord's loving blessings on the coordinated efforts of lay people, pastors, and Wells Home Missions. It's a journey that began more than three years ago. You might be seeing the first time our Synod has used robots as a way to connect with the community. It's part of a special camp focusing on science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM for short. The mission team at Richland Center recognized that a STEM camp would attract young families, an important step in building a connection to the community, well in advance of the first worship service. God asks us to love each other, and when we do things like the STEM camp, when we do things like Easter for Kids, we're expressing that love for people by offering them things that maybe they can't get otherwise. I hope it shows the community that we're committed to being here and that we care about their well-being, their spiritual well-being, and their overall well-being, too. Today's world is a little different than it used to be, and that um, maybe the approaches are a little bit different. You let it go when you're ready. The STEM camp was just one in a series of relationship building efforts here. The events also included monthly Mornings with Mommy gatherings, an Easter for Kids event, live nativities at Christmas time, and monthly Bible studies. We pretty much started uh, from the ground up and our pastors and our local uh, missionaries and, and uh, uh, synod workers have helped us through this tremendously. So, by the time the first service was held, the congregation was already well known in the community, thanks to many volunteer hours and support from our synod, working in tandem by God's grace. And so seeing it today was like, wow, it's actually happened. That's just really such a blessing to see it and see it all fall together. Three years of showing our care and concern for the community uh, and, uh, and then building that towards the reason why we have that care and concern is for what Jesus has done for us. God willing, the next step for the congregation will be a church building here in Richland Center. But the groundwork is already in place, thanks to a team effort and a few creative ideas. It's important to note the lay effort that went into the new mission startup in Richland Center. It's a very common template as members of nearby congregations volunteer their time and talents to help our Savior start a new mission church nearby. It's an outreach opportunity that's not far from home. To learn more about Wells Home Missions, visit wells.net forward slash home missions. So this morning we just have one question here. Um, was it Adam and Eve's fault that Cain killed his brother? You could probably answer that two different ways. Both are true. Um, 
yes, kind of, right? Because Adam and Eve are the ones that sinned. They're the ones that brought sin, and from sin, death came into the world. So, okay, um, the, the, the murder wouldn't have happened if, if they hadn't sinned eating that fruit in the first place. Okay, that way. But also, no. Cain and Abel were, were grown people. Uh, Adam and Eve weren't responsible for their grown adults' choices. And it is very clear that uh, looking at, at Cain and Abel, that they made different choices. Adam and Eve were not responsible for their grown child's choices. Um, they, Cain and Abel were brought up by the same parents. It, it wasn't what Cain, Adam and Eve did. It was Cain's own choices that led choice after choice, which led to the big result. Um, great, great question. Uh, keep them coming when we have these Q&As. Let's uh, close today with our, our final hymn, hymn 396. In Adam we have all been one. Good morning again. Uh, just a few quick announcements. Um, there's no Bible class this morning um, at 9.30. Tim Rimple is out of town, so no class this week. Um, and just highlighting a, a few things in the service folder. Um, page, uh, let's see, page 9 is a picture of our board of family members and, and their goals and what they are responsible for. So certainly include them in your prayers. Each month we're going to highlight a, a different board, a ministry board, and, and the ministries under them. And then also, um, Illinois Lutheran is having a, the ultimate kids sale that's coming up in uh, just a few weeks. Information about that is in here. Um, our egg Easter egg hunt, the egg scramble, is going to be coming up on Palm Sunday, and we need candy. Fun size, individually wrapped candy. There's already a bin full of candy, but we're doing 4,000 plastic eggs, which means we need 4,000 pieces of candy. So keep it coming, please. And then also, um, if you didn't know, it is in here, uh, the Illinois Lutheran's call for first grade 
was returned, it was declined, and just in case you didn't know, Mr. Dorn also declined his call. So we're glad that Mr. Dorn is staying and will be issuing another call for a first grade teacher. Have a blessed day. Thank you.